Okay, so I have a Sega Saturn in the original box from the 90s. This guy's definitely a collector. He sent along a note here. Uh, check caps, mid-90s console, had to reset itself once, so suspect caps getting old. Has saboteur cart inserted in back behind removable cover. So he just wants it basically checked out. There it is right there in all of its glory. One of the earlier gaming consoles. I don't know how many bits this one is. 4, 8, 16, 7 million. But anyhow, there's some info. And then in here is the cart that he speaks of. Got a little micro SD card in it, it looks like. Let's see if it'll focus on it. And yes, it will. There's the memory backup battery right there. So, yeah. Well, first thing I'm going to do is power this thing on and make sure it actually functions before I even touch one screw on it. And he did include the cables, luckily. And it does have the original instruction manual. Still in pretty doggone good shape for the age, I would say. Uh, we probably don't need anything in here. Oh, there's how to play uh, CDs, obviously. Okay. Oh, there is a controller, incidentally. Okay, well, let's go ahead and connect this up to the capture device and see if it wants to play friendly with it. Okay, I do have AC power connected to the back of this unit. Let's go ahead and power this on. Capture device is running. And see if we get anything at all. And yes, we do. Let's move this over so I can actually put the video up in the corner. 1995. Okay, well, it definitely does have some games on it. Obviously stored on that little micro SD card. That's pretty cool. So we don't even have to use the CD drive. Okay, well, I have verified that it does actually power up. So let's go ahead and get it open. Take a look inside. Well, it certainly comes right apart. No questions asked. That's certainly nice. Well, we'll go ahead and check these two caps on the power supply right here. And then it looks like I need to remove the complete CD drive and get this cover off to get any caps on the main board. One moment. Well, there's certainly more caps than I thought, and the good news is no surface mount caps. However, it does look like they're using these little tiny electrolytics. I'm not a fan of those little micro guys, but it does have a fair share of them. So we will go ahead and pop this board out and test all of them. There's what looks like a surface mount, but I believe it's a, a through lead capacitor same form factor as a surface mount and uh, looks like a couple of mods maybe a defect at the factory on that chip right there with the orange wires attached okay well there is the board from the sega saturn okay let's go ahead and get down into the meat and the potatoes of this thing Someone's obviously been in here. You can see by the clean marks on it.
Oh, isn't that nice? It looks like they've marked every cap for me, so I don't have to. So I do have my anti-static mat here, not to do any damage to this guy. So I'm just going to verify that each one of these is a capacitor before I start testing these things. One moment. Okay, so I think I'm ready to start ESRing these capacitors. I did go ahead and basically make a roadmap of all the caps on the board and their values. I did not observe polarity, however. I did just get their values. So I'll get that back here where I can see it. Power this thing on. And that's way too high. Gotta clean the contacts. Should be about 0 0.08, yes. And then we'll reset it to zero. And we'll start checking caps down here on the bottom, 47 microfarad. Reads 1.7, just a little bit high. 100 at 6.3. 0.18, that's good. There's probably more in parallel, if I had to guess. Yeah, 10 at... 16 reading 0.13 that's really really good 100 at 6.3 and 0.7 ohms i'm going to say that one is a standalone so that's a good value did i read this one already yeah 0.69 ohms 220 at 10 0.17 and a 330 0.1 ohms yeah, 10, that's a little low for a 10, but that's good because there's many, many more in parallel, most likely. Yeah, 0.11. So on to these guys back here, a 10. 0.6 ohms, obviously more than one in parallel. I don't know if this customer wants me to unsolder every single cap. There's a 100 at 0.6, that seems about right. These are 220s, 0.4 ohms, perfect. 0 0.4, 0 0.4 again. They're all in the 0.4 range, so that is excellent. These are 22s, or this one is a 22, three ohms. That's okay for a 22. This is a 10. Three and a half ohms, that's fine for a 10. I don't know if you can see it or not. 2.8 ohms on a 10. 3.3 on a 10, that's fine. Another 10, I do believe. But this one's a 22. 3.2 ohms. That should be just fine for this application. 47, 3.2 ohms, just a tad bit high. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. That's a 10. That's fine for a 10. There we go. 1.9 ohms on a 47. That's okay. And then over here, we've got a 220s, 0.56. That's great. And 0.58. That's great as well. Another 10 at 16. 5 ohms. It's right on the edge. Not the end of the world. 47 of 0.1 ohms. Obviously, there's more than one in parallel. And then over here, another 47 at 0.1 ohms. Obviously, more than one in parallel. I'd expect about a half ohm out of those guys. So as far as I can tell, every cap on this board test is just, just fine. Um, I'm not seeing anything that I would be overly concerned about, even with the ones in parallel. Typically, if one of those caps... Uh, begins to fail they will all fail since they were manufactured at the same time and i would expect to see you know 25 ohms if they've all failed but i don't believe we have complete failure so i guess i'm going to button this thing back up there is a cap on the uh, cd slash dvd board that i've got over here that i could go ahead and check there might be more hiding up underneath, yes, there's one here, one there, and then three caps back here. So let's go ahead and check those guys as well. Let me get this back in its ESD safe uh, little guard that it's in. One moment.
Okay, well the circuit board is back in there. I don't have any screws in it yet, but at least it'll be ESD safe at this point. All right, so I guess I need to make a quick roadmap on these guys, and then we'll go ahead and test those caps as well. Okay, on to the CD drive. This is a 2.2 at 50 volts. And I read forums, I'm okay with that on a 2.2. 47 at 10 volts. 1.4, that's perfectly fine. Another 47 at 10. And it reads zero. How is that even possible? Oh, that's why. So I'm reading across the contacts. There we go. That's better. 0.38 ohms. And this last one is a 100 at 10. And obviously I'm on the wrong place again. Yes. There we go, 0.62 ohms, that's perfectly fine. This one over here is a 220 at 6.3. 0.5 ohms, that's pretty good. And way down here on the bottom, another 220 at 6.3. 0.3 ohms on that one, I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah, it's where the connections I thought these were gonna be on are offset based on what I see on the bottom of the board. Next, let's go ahead and check the power supply caps. I do need to unsolder one of these caps that is in the Pi filter network right here. So there's a cap and a coil and a cap. So I'm just gonna unsolder one lead of that coil right there to isolate the capacitors. Hopefully this is on and warmed up. And yes, it is. Okay. So I didn't do a roadmap on these, but this is a 68 at 200 volts. Hopefully it is discharged. And yes, it is. And it reads 0.26 ohms. I'm perfectly fine with 0.26. Now, these other two caps, 2700 at 6.3 and 1500 at 6.3. So first, I just wanna go ahead and measure pad to pad, and it should be virtually open. Are we not loose? Are there two coils? I must just be reading the resistance to ground so first cap, 0 0.04, that is excellent. Second cap, 0 0.06. I'm perfectly fine with those values on these two caps. And then I'm getting 1.1 ohms, which would be the two caps added together, the ESR. So that's perfectly fine. Well, as far as I can tell, everything tests great. I don't see any bad caps on this board or the others at all. Well, let's go ahead and get this thing thrown back together for my customer to pick up, and we're going to call it a day. Okay, so in the reassembly process, I looked at these connections off the power supply. These are the four main posts that go through those holes right there that connect the power supply to the main board. And uh, they weren't the best. I went ahead and soldered those up, and then I started looking over here at where that diode lives right there. and is that possibly a bad connection? I thought I'd go ahead and just solder it up just to be safe. Maybe since we're here, we'll hit the transformer as well. Sorry if that was off you, but I went ahead and soldered all the connections on the transformer as well. Yeah, the macro view doesn't give you much room 
And I think we'll go ahead and hit the main FET. Might be a transistor, I'm not sure. The main driver transistor, they don't look really good at all. And if these things break loose, then pure havoc will result. Oh, those are just resistors. Interesting. There's the FET right there. Although the FET definitely looks better than the resistors did. Like I said, might be a FET. Might be a bipolar. I'm not sure. That little guy right there doesn't look too terribly good. No, it certainly looks better. Yeah, it's just a bipolar C4507. All right, I'm happy with that. Let's throw this thing back together. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and clean the optical pickup just because it's open and easy to access. Very light downward pressure, circular motions. All right, and we'll go ahead and wipe off the turntable as well. A little bit of gunk, not too much. Okay, I like that. Now let's put this thing back together and give it a final test. And some of you may have noticed I did not connect the ground screw to the chassis of the CD mechanism. It is reconnected now. Okay, all back together. Here we go. Power on. I get a green light. That's a good sign. And, of course, it wants me to set it up now. But, I mean, I can plug the controller into it. Let's try to power it off. And then we'll power it back on and see if it comes up into the same setup or not. Yes. All right, well, I guess I need to connect the controller to it. That is working. Exit. Okay, I think it's all set up. Disk unsuitable for this system. Well, I'm not sure what happened, but it's not reading the card at this point. Not sure how that works. Let's power it back off. And we'll power it back on. I did have the card unplugged, so it might not be happy with that. All right, there it goes. Just didn't want to do it the first power up. Anyhow, that's going to be it. I'm going to throw this thing back together. 
and we'll get it back to the customer. Where's the go back button? Wow, a lot of games. Wow. We'll just load one up, make sure it starts playing. Well, I'm going to say it's working as designed, so I'm going to get it back to my customer, and that is going to be it. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video and checking the caps on the Sega Saturn. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond when I have time. While you're down there, if you could, please hit that subscribe button and like this video. It does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. As of right now... Uh, what is this? October 2024? Yeah, Go ahead and leave me a question. Up my ride. Wow, that's loud. As of right now, if you want to contact me, go ahead and leave me a comment in one of the videos. That's the best way to reach me. Because I tend to check the comments much more than the emails. Just been so busy recently. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end. I really appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Come get some. Okay, here we go. Capturing in three, two, wait. Where's the memory card? Well, gotta have that. Okay, memory card has been inserted into the capture device. Okay, capturing in three, two, one capture and it shows it is recording okay here we go powering on power has been applied still get nothing press the power button and I still get nothing am I wrong the wrong input yes I'm on the wrong input well let's start that over Stopping the capture device. Stop. And we're going to start a new segment. Okay, here we go. Capturing in three, two, one. Capture. And it shows it is recording. And get it ready for my customer to come pick up. But anyhow, everything checks perfectly fine. I'm going to throw this thing back together and get it ready for my customer to come pick up. Okay, here we go. Capture device recording in three, two, one, capture. Try it again. Three, two, one, capture. 